Good morning, Hildor. Hi, how are you this morning? Terrific. Great. Great to be here. Great, excellent. And I'm so excited to be here. I think this is about, I don't know, the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th show that we're having on your environment now. And I'm Keith Fiveson with the Center for Wellbeing, the Work Mindfulness Project. And I'm so excited to be with you this morning, Hildor, uh, for your environment now and to talk about um, what's really happening in the environment. Uh, who do we have today and what's our show all about? I love the I love your little doggy there. That's wonderful. Yeah, little Caesar. He doesn't like it when it rains. He's a little nervous. Mm. It's raining outside, so he's a little concerned that the skies are falling. But you know, it's well, good to just hold each other through the times we're living. And I'm not counting our segments because each segment seems very new and and in its own right uh, to be here. And if we look at the word earth i have here one of my favorite books earth speaks. earth speaks and if you look at the word earth there you have it art hmm. we can even move the age to the front and find the heart hmm. but uh the polymaths of this world i've always been fascinated by the ancient uh polymaths and then the renaissance uh polymaths and and now we have a modern polymath here and Fantastic. and i'm going by a word of mouth here with the recommendation of john halpern who is here i have Thank invited you, our friend who i will let introduce himself alan todd is here speaking to us from portugal today i alan, believe alan, alan, alan did, did you, you fly? Alan? i think he flew in did you just fly into Portugal or how? No, I, moved, I was in Lisbon and I uh, drove to south to the countryside. I live in, uh, in Lisbon and I- You live in I Lisbon, worked, yeah. Yeah, and I worked here in, um, in the countryside in a residence. So I just drive maybe two hours and a half, like 300 kilometers, 200 kilometers. And you're okay. from France or I'm from- French, yes, yeah. but I'm working and live in Portugal for 10 years. Mm. Wonderful. Uh, yes. um, so yeah, I'm French. I'm European. Let's say. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, uh, so oh, Alan, um, I'm uh, I'm interested, and in, I know Hildor. I I know nothing about polymaths, and uh, certainly nothing about that. But uh, I'm wondering, Alan, what can, what do you want to tell us all about who you are and what got you interested, perhaps, and maybe something that we should know about what's on the screen here, which looks like a an energy source between the heavens, the earth, and uh, uh, the individual and the earth, perhaps. I don't, I don't know what that is, but it, 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 it looks wonderful. So tell us, Ella. Well, so it's a flag, actually. So it's a flag like equivalent to the US flag or the, the French flag. Hmm. Uh, it represents the, the kingdom of plants, the intelligence of plants. So it is made in the tradition of flags. So every sign and everything has a meaning. So it's a drawing that have a legal signification. Uh, basically, it's saying that the, the, the intelligence of plants is uh, controlling the ground and the sky. As a, as a climate regulator and as a soil regulator. And uh, it's spreading uh, horizontally with the green. And so the clarifier, it's creating the ozone. So it's really a powerful flag uh, of a powerful kingdom that is not human, of course, but uh, as, a, as an artist, then I'm working for the kingdom of plants. And so I propose to them to communicate to, with humanity to make the, the game of the flag because uh, there is a lot of flags, as you know, in the human society. Hmm. So, yeah, this is how I can introduce myself as a forest ambassador. Um, and I believe every artist is a forest ambassador. I believe um, I've I've studied different type of uh, matter, 
So I was really interested about science and biology when I was a child, but I did painting and math. And then after I made law studies, uh, and I did a lot of comparative studies in law, study uh, English system, uh, uh, Romanic system, Occidental system, Anglo-Saxon system, and comparative them. And so I, did, I started to develop this comparative process about everything, to compare, to understand, to create a metaphor, to create new ideas, uh, monsters. And so I end up like uh, in 2014, I end up that there were nothing more artistic than to, to do for a start and to make mm. the forest a work of art. So, uh, so, so, Al, so Alan, one of the things that I was intrigued by is your, um, your sort of definition, if you will, uh, as uh, a polymathic protocol as a collaboration with art, science, politics, and shaman shamanism to create spiritual thought and reach. And uh, so this is what you do. This is what it's all about. Yeah. In the evolution of, of, uh, of theory of painting, everything I do is painting. And uh, my references are painters of history. So it's a really something that's somehow classic but sounds weird in this world. But indeed, it's really in the tradition of Renaissance period or very academic uh, protocols. And basically, uh, since Wagner and since now this total era where the artist is embracing the reality, then uh, we are really seriously inviting to be polymath because how can we be, uh, embrace the totality without the, 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 the polymacy that is under it. So polymacy is to compare and to use every type of knowledge, whether mathematic or painting or dance or biology or, or law or history rather, and putting them in count in the creative process. And uh, so it's, going, it's getting and going in the details. So it's kind of brainy. But at the end, at the end, it's a very nice tool to, to be able to embrace totality and to put also your personal experience and your personal life as a body inside it to try to reach sincerity. So the polymathic protocol is more a tool to reach totality, to reach this total experience of art that is not only the artist doing for himself, but the wall uh, environment that is doing with him the performance and the work of art. Mm. So, so after to, to, be the the flow, to be in the the to be in the wu we as uh, from a Taoist viewpoint to be in the the course of uh, connection between the heavens and the earth and the uh, and the and the geometry that uh, really flows through not only the plants but through life itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you compare, when you make comparative studies, I will go quickly on this just to show the type of image you could have when you make comparative studies of history and when you compare law and, and, and decision making. And uh, there is this very interesting war uh, about the image that is at the foundation of our society, where the Muslim uh, invaded Europe and were against representation of God, were against figurative art at the time. And they were for a mathematic uh, design because God was mathematic. And because of this invasion, it had a huge influence in Occidental society. And the Occidental society start to accept destruction and they make a contract, Charlemagne make a contract with the invader to agree to never represent the face of God. And so, the drawing, the artist, is totally defining from this moment with law, with emperors, with invaders, uh, what will be the shape of spirituality. And at this moment, even for occidentality, it was a mathematic and scientific perception. And the Livre de Kell, who is a very Celtic example, very Nordic example, has on his border this very mathematic form and it has to have been done during the whole period of those Muslim invasions and those influence that have led to this um, 
contracts of Karl Mainz and the Roman Empire and the Muslim Empire. And then after that, this is the moment when the, the Renaissance is really sacralized, sacralized the polymacy. The polymacy get danger because of modern society. I'm not really modern in that sense because the modern society is capitalization of planet and it's capitalization of knowledge and it has divided the artist and the scientist. When the camera arrived in history, artists are no longer welcome in the science department. And this is a very big crisis. So Forest Art is trying to renew with this polymacy, um, but also including uh, the, this culture that is outside the stage culture. And the best, the best example was before, at this moment of the picturality, when, uh, when the Renaissance artist gained the right to have a studio gallery and to sell their work to the public. Before this 13, I think it's uh, 1391, artists were only working for lords or for church. They were not working for, for you and me, for the public. And so they couldn't show their work as they want. They couldn't paint what they want. Um, can you After, pause? Can you just pause for a minute right here? Um, yes. You highlight Goethe in the in the diagram. I'm just trying to. There's so much going on here. That's why I'm so just wanna, yeah. <laughs> just what, just yeah. to pause. Just to take a minute. Um, in terms of, we have a comment from Linda Lombardo, a forest therapy worker. Um, she practices the art of, of Shinrin Yoko, and she says, an idea solidified during the enlightenment was that in order to be studied, nature could not be analogous to God, which meant that it had to be a woman or given a feminine persona. Uh, uh if you go on the detail of this exactly, there is this uh, period, uh, uh, the natural Celtic and the Celtic woman, and uh, um, there is this moment between, um, between the, the, the end of the Roman Empire and the monotheism, the arriving of the monotheism and the invasion uh, of Muslims. There's a, a hole where, where, the, where the woman of the wood um, is really influencing the, imagi the collective imaginary. But after, there is a very tragic law for women in Europe. This is uh, 800 of massacre by mm -hmm. the Vatican. There is a law made by the Vatican which was the, against the witches of the wood. But basically, the witches of the wood were intelligent women uh, living independently in the forest. They knew, uh, they were biologists, they were, and they were, uh, massacred during 800 years. It ended yeah. in 1830 uh, mm -hmm. because uh, the, the French Empire negotiates with the Vatican that because the civil code is making the woman the property of the man, then the Vatican doesn't need anymore to prosecute intelligent women. And men can marry the intelligent women and own them. That is why all the scientific production around 1830 to 1920, who were made by women, they are made under the name of their husband. But at least they are not killed, and at least they are not prosecuted. But then after the, the 20s, after the, this, then the women start to, 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 to emerge finally. And the bio, art, the bio art movement that is after the 90s, which is contemporary, which I'm part of. I'm not a good representative of it because I'm a man, because I believe that what we are assisting today with the bio art movement, it's the first movement in art history since a long time that is led by women. The forest art the universe, it's really a universe led by women, by feminists, by horizontality. Because the intelligence of plant is teaching us this horizontality. There is something very deeply feminine in this. So if we go back to this uh, very emotion uh, and magic are really part of, of a coolie of culture, art, or aesthetic, or as much as science and, and law and objectivity. It's not there is one on the, uh, on the top of the other. It's a circle. So it's, 
it's they all influence the same in the process and they all have their the 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 force of influences in it, and now I've I'm I've met this uh, young artist. I mean, young she's I feel old so now. I get I met forty three so now. I feel so <laughs> but uh, she's working on the forest also, and she's arriving in Portugal for since two thousand seventeen. And, um, and she's trying to build a community and she's really good at it as building this community of forest artists, this, this capacity of horizontality, of sharing information, this very deep feminine uh, power. Uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's a very big opportunity for now. So basically- I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like pausing a little bit with your diagram here because and also a quote that uh, speaks to me by Thich Nhat Hanh comes to my mind. The miracle is not to walk on water. The miracle is to walk on the green earth, dwelling deeply in the present moment and feeling truly alive. Uh, this uh, need for miracles to be somehow supernatural uh, is really uh, interesting coming from that uh, cultural change Whereas the early settlers, prior to the early settlers, the Gaian um, uh, mentality, uh, the women-led cultures were uh, deeply, deeply in reverence of earth and the seed and planting the seed and honoring the sacred in each day. So we can return to that as people on earth starting to not take this body, this embodying life for granted, but rather uh, seeing each breath as an opportunity to live and be sacred. And you say shamanism, magic, emotions are together in one circle here, right? And the artistic expression, I was talking to a friend of mine who was writing a book and she said, um, yes, I, I, I think I would like to be a writer. And, and why not? Every each one of us, there's a calling. You can do, you you can feel that creativity coming up, but you can only feel it if you're present and available for it. But if you're in linear thinking, and you're serving a purpose that's not rooted in the very fact that each of us is a, a pretty miraculous being, two feet on earth, one and the hat in the heavens, right? The miracles, yeah, I, the, the miracle is right here. Right. I think I think you you what, what the very you the question you're you're raising is uh, the what's complicated I guess for the occidental society is to make a, a link between spirituality and intellectuality is how our intelligence can be in connection with uh, with life and with with this uh, intensity of life and reality of life and I think. Um, the, it's the, 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 what I'm talking, when I'm talking about the indigenous, this is exactly the reference I want to share with you. It's the, even one big master of Renaissance such as Leonardo is reminding to the academy that you, the only master is nature. It's like you can come with your references, you can come with this other famous artist, other famous thinker, other famous writer, if you forget that the, the real master you have is nature itself, then you're not an artist. And then this idea, this simple idea, you can really find this idea in every master of history of most. They always have caught something similar uh, across modernity too. And you really recognize them like this. So that make me think about the wild man somehow, about uh, what if the artist, uh, uh, Occidental artist colleague, is the indigene, is the, the wild man, the guy that is from the forest, the friend of the, the woman of the wood, uh, the, the one that is understanding the message of birds, that is understanding the message of the trees and is talking with them, the chairman then. What if the artist is part of this family? So uh, this is what this is what have drove me to what to this if what if what if the scientists uh, were uh, as well? Uh, aren't we exactly. all? Every exactly. every single one of us is uh, exactly. fed by air. We can't 
live without breathing and earth is our uh, master in that way. Um, the greens, it's always yeah. fascinated me the disconnect, the reality we're living, the way we live in the modern society doesn't reflect that sacred connection that's found in each breath in the cycle. When I receive uh, my breath from uh, the photosynthetic beings and then I exhale and they take it and there's a continuous exchange. And as a tree sister, it's beyond belief that this intelligent creature should be deforesting at twice the rate we're reforesting given the fact that we need breath. And, and what's even more concerning is the acidification of the ocean where uh, at least half of our breath is coming from. So it's, it's, it's not, it's the time now for a shift in consciousness. And I think in terms of that recognition, how do we make that connection? Yeah. And I, I just want to say that this, this feels like this uh, existential angst, you know, this uh, existential angst that I think we're all having, which is the connection of nature uh, and uh, our, our essential nature and versus the sort of the, um, the materialistic uh, uh, machine that really uh, continues to uh, gobble up what is our nature, whether or not it's the, the trees or the planet uh, or the yes, resources. I think, yeah. I think we forget something here very deeply important. It's like it's still possible that we are deforesting because some plants want us to deforest. Uh, we are totally manipulated by addiction of sugar, by our consumptions, and the way the weeds uh, grow, uh, it needs deforestation to grow. So maybe we are just slaves of what we eat, of our drug we eat. Considering uh, vegetal and plants intelligence is always to put in perspective that we could be manipulated by other beings. And we are waiting for the extraterrestrials to come, but maybe they're here since the beginning. When you look at a seed, the intelligence of a seed, how it fall up out of your hand when you carry it, how it wall away, how it's go in very deep places and very precise spots to grow. Uh, we, we, now there's this movement in biology about uh, in the, so it's really focus on intelligence of plants like Stefano Moncuso, who is really uh, rethinking the world as, as if the plants are controlling us. And uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you guys eat sugar, if you love fruit, or if you smoke, if you drink coffee. What have you eaten this morning? What have you eaten today? What, what is your booster? And what, we know that what we eat influences our, our emotions and also our brain, also our consciousness now. We know that viruses can influence also our way to think. So the, what is libabit? What is, uh, do, do, are we what we eat? Are we, so this is, I always question when we, when we criticize human, I think, it's, I think we should remind that how we can help nature in the good way um, as part of it and remembering maybe we, we cannot, we, can, we could never control it. And, uh, and the, I believe there's an information about this white man who have disappeared during the colonization in Europe. And uh, he have disappeared because uh, Europe have destroyed the forest, their forest to build boats to colonize. And so there's a big moment of deforestation in Europe during, the, during colonization. And a lot of women in the wood and men in the wood who were associated to poet white men, men of the wood who has we are good in poetry, who know plants, secrets, who know poisons, who know drugs. Um, they were, they disappeared. Uh, they, they, at first this moment, at this period, there were no more longer stories of them. Hmm. And so this is what have drive me to this, uh, all of this uh, conclusion that uh, to, to, re, to reforest will help the art, will help the artists to come back. And as a painter, there is no more forest to paint. As a poet, there is no more forest to talk about. So the only thing I have to do is to plant forest and to help the forest to grow. 
because right. I don't want any more humans. I'm not, I'm tired about humanity. What I want is to work in, for them, for the plants. This is a good time, Alan, to uh, actually pose a question that uh, came from um, Kaylin. Yeah. And, uh, Kaylin, do you want to pose the question? Because I, I know we have about 15 minutes left, so we'd like to get some involvement. Uh, and Kaylin, your question? Yeah, in the middle now? We okay. are in the middle? Huh? Yes. Oh, sure. Yes. Oh, perfect. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. I wanted to say I really appreciate what you're saying about um, how much you want to work for um, the plants and how you want to be considerate of them and, um, I guess, their livelihoods. But I want to ask you, um, isn't it counterintuitive to separate humans from nature? Aren't, aren't humans a part of nature? And if humans are a part of nature, what is the legitimacy of a world proven by science? So um, that goes along with the theories of physics of a world that is greater than ourselves. Um, isn't the meaning of existence the meaning that we give it, and isn't there only one natural world? Ah, so it's the question of uh, reality. Yeah. So, or, I or, wish or, we could see you, Kaylin. Yeah. Can you can you turn yeah. on your camera? A million I realities, uh, Alan. And how do we how do we I, how do we conjoin them all? And what what is reality? And if it's not based no, on I, what yeah, uh, saying saying I uh, I'm on the side of the plant. I'm not, I'm not saying that human is not part of nature. I'm just taking a side. Um, you know, nature is made of predation. Uh, some people eat some others. Um, and uh, I have decided to, to be on uh, the side of a, a species that is in danger or that is misconceived. I have been decided to be an ambassador for humanity. So I guess I like humanity because uh, still, because if I, I try to communicate with another species, of, uh, an open dialogue with another species. Uh, I also do that for my family, for my friend, for my community, because I, I really think, uh, um, including uh, the intelligence of plants in our culture would enrich our collective intelligence and would enrich our perception of nature. So I totally agree with you that uh, uh, everything, and this is also what I was meaning to say when the human is not the only responsible of deforestation because there is, uh, he can be influenced by, by, by what he's eating because he wants to plant food there. So, so, so yeah, we are, there is an ecosystem and regarding this idea of ecosystem, we have to celebrate the culture, the indigenous culture for that, because the, the, the concept of ecosystem is not an occidental concept. It's been imported with the manifestation of indigenous in uh, North America, in, uh, in North America during the 70s, right? 60s, 70s with uh, uh, Native American. And, uh, and then in America, it didn't make so much, uh, it make very political uh, ending and uh, but in Europe, it's contaminate a lot the, 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 the scientific community. And maybe Europe has to, has to deal with the past of uh, initiator of colonization. So I think they are more maybe open to recognize this indigenous culture. Yes. And then, I, I think you're also touching upon something that's very striking. There's a, there's a, a pilgrimage that I recommend anyone to take if they're on the east coast of North America. You can go from north of Vermont and drive towards the city. And as urbanization will have it, there is invasive thought and growth. So if you're up north and north of Vermont, there is very little invasive growth. It's a healthy <laughs> ecosystem. They even tell you that you don't have to worry about ticks. You can, um, relax because they have a sort of a self-regulatory system that's more natural. Now then you have the urbanization and then the epicenter, um, Manhattan. The closer you get to Manhattan, the more invasive thought, the more invasive growth, the less indigenous of your setting. It's interesting. Mm. 
Yeah, and just uh, uh, to go ahead and make sure that the question was answered. Uh, Kaylin, do you, um, are, are you good? Just um, Jennifer. Oh, I really like- I can interject. Part of the reason for that um, oh, wait a second, uh, Jennifer, um, uh, Kaylin, are you good? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Jennifer, Jennifer uh, there, uh, John Halpern wants to jump in first, so, and then uh, we'll recognize you, okay? I'll, I'll type into chat. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, John. Alan, um, two things come to my, to my mind today uh, about the flag, <clears throat> which is very exciting, the idea of this flag which has no country, but it sort of sh shamanistically uh, evokes the uh, kind of um, interconnectivity with the energy of, of nature as a kind of domain to occupy uh, consciously this um, domain of, of nature's energy. Is that kind of an idea? Yeah, it, has, it doesn't have a country, but it has a dimension. The, the when you study the intelligence of plants, uh, you, you cannot suspect what is happening when you're in the garden. The plants know that you are here and they are communicating with each other to, uh, to, to prevent uh, the others, you're their friend. So everybody speaks together in the garden to tell that there is an animal inside that is you. And suddenly you will pick up a fruit and then the tree will say, oh, it's a vegan animal, he's picking fruit and everybody know about it. Uh, when you make walk in the ground, the mushrooms and the sensors in the trees will, will advise everybody that you hear. So, so it's not a country, yes, but it's a parallel dimension of the same planet. That's why they don't understand property. They don't well, understand. Yeah. Uh, they, they don't, uh, they're not capitalist because wherever there is water and possibility, they will grow. Okay. And you will the spread other... them. So. Yeah. Actually, borders are just a human construct. So, like, um, you know, so are passports. So, so Alan, so, um, the, the other question is, uh, I think, something that we can expand also when you join us on our Zoom uh, interviews with yes. the Institute for Cultural Activism. But yeah, um, this is the last part that is missing. Uh, I, yes, have uh, I really want to hear Jennifer. I heard Jennifer had something, a, a comment or a, a, a thought she wanted to share before we move on to the, that part. Oh, okay. Yes. Jennifer, can you unmute? Well, Jennifer just put her question in. <laughs> uh, I have the epicenter of invasives because it was the center of imported plants in the earliest days of colonization. The first nursery in the US is what is now Canessa, Canessa or Casena Park. And to that, many of the estates featuring uh, the latest discoveries and specimens from all over the world, the waves of immigrants arriving with seeds of their favorite plants and herbs. Wonderful, good, wonderful insight. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, and you have to remember, you have, if you study the seeds, how it, how it works, the seeds are very, uh, a wonderful technology uh, to uh, travel. So the seed, there's made seeds that are made to attach to the feather or the clothes. So if you walk in Portugal in the countryside and then you take the plane and you go to the US, you will bring seeds anyway. So the, the, the fact that animals are moving, like humans are animals same, even with the moment when they don't move the plants on purpose for agriculture or gardening, like what is mentioned now in this comment, uh, we, there is also not a will of the plant. The plant wants to propage, they want to use the animal to propage, the fig trees, for instance, it grow only if it, it grow, it is eaten by, because there is a toxic uh, in the gastric system of the bird that is uh, open the seeds and it need to be shit, <laughs> to, be, to be expulsed by the bird to grow. That is why the, the, the fig trees grow on the wall or it can grow in any places because, because uh, the strategy of the tree, of the plant, is to use the animal to propage. Yes, so yes, spread by we, droppings. 
-hmm. Yes, so we are animals, so yes, we propage seeds. And there are species more invasive than some others, but they have wonderful strategies. Sometimes it's beauty. Uh, a lot of the tulip, it's amazing the story of the tulip. It's just a beautiful flower. And look how successful this plant has been, thanks to humanity, to propage. Because just the human is fascinated by the beauty of the flower. So you can, you can move perspective and see from the perspective uh, of, of, of the plant. <laughs> Right. And so, now, if you want, I can propose you the technique uh, and the law art to respond so, to this uh, question. So, Alan, yes, uh, the question I've got for you is uh, sort of uh, continuing on with this intelligence, because I truly believe that the plant intelligence uh, with more plants, and certainly if we changed our diets and we went 100% plant-based, uh, we would find that we would be able to access a different degree of intelligence and our own humanity. Um, but I'm wondering from your viewpoint, and certainly uh, John Halpern has asked the question, what can we do to propel uh, and to, re whether or not it's reforesting or in terms of activism, uh, to go ahead and make sure that we are able to evolve? Because we can't, in my view, evolve without plants. We can't evolve without this connection and this intelligence to the earth. And this is really, I think, what your art really tries yes. to tries the, the, to pay in yeah. some way. And the work that John Hal Halpern is doing and why we're all kind of here. So what are your are thoughts we, about that? Are we evolving or are mm -hmm. we returning mm -hmm. so to I who we to are? Share, uh, uh, how can <laughs> I? May, it might be the, exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sharing again this so okay so first quickly this this was the, at first at the beginning i worked on the biological aspect how to regenerate soil and how to create uh forest soil in complicated lane or dry landed and then it goes by tree distribution reforestation so but it was in the performance field and i start to to, to, to draw a map with where we we'll plant trees and uh, stimulate owners to plant trees and to have trees. In, it looks in like a land. crop circle. It looks like a crop circle there, Alan. Yeah, like a zone, like a delimited zone where uh, the, it will be a cultural zone because it will be an art piece all around the landscape. And uh, at this moment, I decided to use the low skills that I have and to, 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 to use the low material to, to, to do that. And then, because it's a PhD research at the University of La Sorbonne and uh, of Porto, then the University of La Sorbonne was interested. And then during pandemic, I talked with different people and then suddenly people are telling me, but you are doing activism. And I'd say, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, so uh, now I understand why, but to understand how it works, I have to introduce you about um, this concept that coming from law, uh, how it works. So basically there is different source of the law. The most common one is the written law. So it can be a contract, it can be a law from parliament, it can be a law from city hall, uh, very local laws. As far as it is written, it's in this the universe. After you have justice, so in America or in England, it's very important. The judge is very powerful. So it's called, uh, it's called um, the common law. Uh, then after you have the academic thought, and in some countries like Asia, a custom is very important as a source of law. But then can art can create it law. So in the, this is really important to understand is what it's called the hierarchy of norms. Every law are uh, organized by a, a system of priority. The constitution of the state is su the superior law and every law that is under the constitution, every decision has to be conformed to that constitution. When a state signs uh, a treaty, 
is making a contract, so another statute law, that is equivalent in value to its own constitution. So when he signed the treaty, he has to be sure that his constitution is equal. The problem of ecological right, ecological law, is we could never reach an agreement because nobody wants to damage the power of property. And ecological laws are limiting the power of property. So many, many states refuse to put in their constitution some right for the forest. That is why Trump left uh, uh, Accord Paris. Um, not, it wasn't concerning the forest, it was concerning the consummation and the pollution. But it's the same type of example. But so, what, what kind of tool we could use? And it's, um, there is this Convention de Bern, this Bern Convention 1886, that is one of the foundation of capitalism and occidental culture. It's a, it's a, it's a convention that is uh, making a treaty between the, the, the countries that are participated of recognition of culture. So basically, a country can no longer destroy the culture of another one. So it has to respect the, 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 the intellectual property rights. It cannot steal an artist. It cannot destroy a piece of art. It has to respect every artist as cultural patrimony of the state. So basically, uh, if tomorrow the United States will leave the Convention Bern, it means I can take the work of Andy Rahul and saying it's my work. I can take the work of Charlie Chaplin and saying it's my work. I can take any Hollywood movie and saying it's my work, etc. There is no more protection of any work of art from America. So this is something America will never do, and this is something France and every country in the world will never do, because it's an intersect protection of their culture and their capitalist propaganda. So how can we heal capitalism with capitalism? And using a very famous law of art of war, that if you have to fight an enemy, you have to fight the enemy with his own weapon. So the idea is to, if we, if we create work of art, then any states that have signed this country have the, oblig the obligation to protect this work of art, right? So what if tomorrow this work of art, this sculpture, it's made of a forest, of a wild forest? So this is what I'm doing. I'm selling to landowners sculpture that are made of forest and to define what is the forest, I'm using biology. And I'm collaborating with biology and with lawyers to draw those contracts. This is just a drawing to, to represent the idea, but we go to real contracts. Because if you look at the difference between Convention Ben and, for instance, the Portuguese uh, statute law about intellectual property, they're almost the same because, of course, they respect the Convention Ben. And it will be the same in the US and it will be the same in every country that I've signed this. So basically, um, with this PhD now, I'm making a workshop with lawyers from Lisbon and with biologists from uh, Portugal and a bit from the States to develop contract model because there's different type of situation, right? The situation where there's nothing in the land and the person want to plant trees. So you have to include the right of modification of the artwork. But basically you have to find owners that agree to lose their power on their property on the perimeter that is drawn on the map. So you can see, for instance, the map here, there is a little rectangle on the green. The proprietor is, we are working on a contract where they agree never to cut anything there, never to touch anything there, never to get in, and letting as wild as possible because this is the sculpture. Are you, are you, suggesting, are you suggesting decolonization? I'm suggesting colonization, colon, to colonize decolonization. Very it's a good. colonization of nature. It's colonization of nature back. 
is like the artist is signing, is selling a protection of nature to a collector. I like it. Basically, it like I'm Alex, using like exactly to... capitalist concept. I'm using capitalist concept. I'm using. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, I, Alan, I love it. Alan, I love it. And it I sounds like it. we need to franchise the idea. I like it. So when, <laughs> when, when the PhD will be, now I understand why it's activist. And the PhD that I'm developing is to, uh, it's also be made with an experience in the US with Rosie Kill residence uh, in New York State and with the Grace uh, Exhibition Space Gallery in Manhattan, where we try to develop performances around it. And I'm trying to apply to universities to make workshops and stuff. And uh, because we need to have example, North American example with the law, how specific, a model of contract for North American, a model of contract for Europe, for Chinese, because actually, this burn convention have been signed almost by everyone. The only one that haven't signed it is the Taliban, who are destroying the, the patrimony in purpose to show that they are not part of the burn convention. And the, 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 sad, the sad part about it, this burn convention, is that it's not including indigenous culture. So Palestine is not there. You need to be a state to be recognized by burn convention. So that is why we need to, to, to help the indigenous people. This is what UNESCO want to work with me about, is how we can help the indigenous people to, to, to become contemporary occidental artists and recognize their patrimony as artwork, as citizens of their state. And then we'll help them to, to, to yeah. This is more or less the idea to follow. So, so, Alan, Alan I, I know we're, um, it feels to me like we could spend uh, a weekend together and still yes. not get uh, uh, all of the passion out of it. And I'm wondering if there's uh, something that you can share with all of our, uh, all of our viewers as well as, uh, you know, just to give us a sense in terms of how we can get involved. Uh, because we are wrap, wrapping up and uh, you're running out of time and I'm just wanting to make sure that we get the full essence of what it is that you're involved with and your passion is, is very, very, very clear. Um, and Hildor, I'm, I'm wondering from the timing viewpoint, were there other questions that came up? Uh, I see uh, that we can maybe spend the last few minutes on with, uh, with Alan, perhaps. Yes, maybe we should go back into uh, where we can all see each other in gallery view and include uh, because Alan, you have here many thinkers and activists and uh, uh, philosophers yeah. on the call. So maybe there's somebody in uh, the group right now who wants to ask or comment. Uh, yeah. And Raymond, I see you had a, a comment, which is bring uh, Alan back. Was that backfire, backfire, or back for more uh, discussion? Yeah, I think maybe Raymond wants to speak. Shall we stop the um, uh, uh, presentation mode, Alan, so we can all see yeah. each other? So you can do see I, Raymond. Do I, need, do I need to click on something for that? Yeah, you need to uh, exit. Uh, Actually, I go. did it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Here we are. Here Raymond, we are. are Raymond, <laughs> Raymond, can you? Yeah, you unmute it. Good. Well, I just I, wanted I, to I, say I, that uh, uh, Alan, Adam brings up so, met, so much. I feel like my mind's exploding that uh, there's so much more to talk about or interact with what he's saying. But, um, and I, could, I like that you're calling him Adam. It's very biblical. Oh, Alan. Alan. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> it's what we're talking about. <laughs> Alan, he, he's the first man. Um, yes. <laughs> well, I'll try to make a brief comment, which I think I could talk for two hours after listening to you speak. But um, you, I applaud you for being on the side of plants. It reminds me of uh, two books. One, The Spell of the Sensuous by David, a David Abram, who says uh, basically that we have lost our contact with, our sensual contact with nature. We're too caught up in our heads. 
and the other, The Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Wolleben, who speaks about how trees interact and communicate uh, with, e with each other. And my other comment is that is about being polymathic. Some, someone asked, what can we do? What can we do? And becoming polymathic, I think, is one of the things we, we, have, to, we have to do. Consciousness, to me, is polymathic. In other words, we have the gift of this consciousness that can do four things. And it's really interesting in Alan, Alan's painting, he has four sectors coming in, and then he has this uh, hourglass uh, in the center, and there's a centerpiece to it. And then there's four streams at the top and four streams at the bottom. So there's really an incredible vertical presence there. And this is something I've been working on in my own writing for years. And it's based on the, right, the work of Carl Jung, who said that the psyche had four functions. And po polymathy to me means we need to pay attention to and balance out all four functions. And what's happened is, as soon as Descartes came up with the idea, I think, therefore I am, human consciousness and society following it has moved into, and necessarily so, what we call the human ego. Human ego is a part of each of our psychic development, but we're stuck there. We're stuck in this box of the human ego, and we have to go back to the center, which Jung called the self, and I, I constructed a little bit different than him, but if you take Alan's painting, put intuition on the top, imagination on the bottom, thinking and sensation. You need all four flowing into the center, in or, and the center is creation. So, so when he's trying to conflate art and nature and make them come together, um, that's the way I take what you mean by becoming a poly polymath. Hmm. So we're uh, so we've got a, a moment left, uh, Alan, for comment, and then we're going to go into overtime on our call here. Uh, so uh, uh, maybe you want to just make a, a short comment about Raymond's um, yeah. uh, statement, and then we'll and then we'll wrap up and then go into overtime. Yeah, I believe it's also polymathy, it's also about sincerity, and uh, also about being tra pragmatical be, be with ourselves. Because sometimes I see so many people who have said, oh, I'm working in a bar and I miss my ex job where I was an artist and uh, I worked two years in a bar and I lost my, my two years of life. And I, I disagree. Uh, it, everything, you, everything you know can be on the table. Every knowledge can be on the table. And I think to put every knowledge on your table, every knowledge you have is uh, something where you can reach your, your your true self and your your true evolution by not judging your knowledge every knowledge is good we need every knowledge on the board it's like and, that's um, yeah that's beautiful alan uh and i think that's uh that's a wonderful capstone for our uh show uh alan uh, how can people get a hold of you uh if they want to uh, find out more about your work and uh, about the uh, activism, if you will. The, I know you're doing some uh, a show with uh, John Halpern on cultural activism, but you yourself, how would people get a hold of you? I can, as I said, it's a, it's a beginning of PhD research. So for now, uh, this is the stage of it. We are, we're, there's more to come actually. But so you can write to me, I can send you articles that I've wrote in English about uh, the evolution and the spirit of it. And but the, the contract, the first contract will be, the first example we will have, we will have because it's a long process because we need to innovate in law also. So I need workshops and everything. And so it's going to be made from now to the end of December. Right. So your email, your email stay tuned, but, but I can also send the thesis project. If you write to me on my website, alantod.com, there is, uh, yeah, my email, perfect, alan.alan.todd.gmail. You can follow me on Instagram also or Facebook, alan.todd. 
So sure. yeah, uh, it's going to be a top one to one, but I don't have it for now a kind of something published online already ready. This is and the stay, idea, but stay around for the uh, discussion afterwards. We go into overtime now. If right. you like, please. I know it's late over there in Portugal, but we we're 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 really enjoying the time. And uh, Hildor, uh, from the viewpoint of our show, thank you so much for uh, and also uh, you as well, John Halpern, for uh, helping us with our with Alan today. And uh, I know uh, other folks might know of folks uh, uh, for reference sake. Uh, and uh, Hildor, how would we get a hold of you uh, if we wanted to um, uh, find out more? Uh, you could uh, write to me at Hildur, H-I-L-D-U-R, at soul, uh, dot center. And um, there's so much here, Alan. You're a wonderful ambassador. Thank you. I'll join you, your Alan. kingdom. <laughs> the plant you, kingdom. Yes, so. Source of life. Thank you so much. Uh, so, you, you brought much uh, to the surface, but perhaps most importantly, how ego-centered we've become. And yeah. it, I've always enjoyed taking the G out of ego and, and turning towards my ecological self. That's really the, the true nature of who we are, a part of the ecosystem. So um, it, it humors me actually that the word humility, uh, earth, uh, even in the grassroots work I've done in whichever capacity, whether it's global or local, humans are still stuck in the linear, um, not, not a very humble way to be as we return to who we are. So in terms of being of service and serving earth, the, indig the indigenous method of decolonizing and not the productive capitalistic method speaks to me. It speaks to me to turn towards the earth with humility and, and do things differently. And uh, yeah. wonderfully yeah. said. And Alan, I hope you'll come back uh, and uh, be a part of the community. Um, yeah, so I want to know more about this. So, um, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna end the show now. Uh, my name is Keith Fiveson with the Work Mindfulness Project. We are gonna go into overtime, so please don't leave us. And I'll make sure that we don't uh, get cut off. Uh, and uh, uh, I want to thank you. And certainly, you can visit the video. We will be posting it. And uh, uh, you know, watch out for your connections. Thank you so much. Ciao. Bye now. <laughs>